It's my pleasure to introduce our main speaker and my friend, Harold Bruner. Harold is a native Hoosier and a retired forester with degrees from Purdue University. After raising his family in Indiana, he relocated to Southwest Florida for 13 years. He retired and moved to Auburn in 2014. A passion for hiking started 10 years ago or so with a visit to the North Georgia mountains. He has done extensive day hiking there in Western North Carolina, the San Francisco Bay Area, and the Colorado Rockies. The last two summers, he, his wife, and his dog have hiked in seven of the Canadian provinces from Saskatchewan to Nova Scotia. In the winter of 2017-18, Harold first offered an Ali class entitled Staying Active Day Hiking. The goal was to seek out hikes of three to six miles on trails within an hour or so of Auburn. For the fall of 2018 Ali term, a second class was added, Staying Active, A Walk in the Park. This was creative, created to offer shorter hikes of under two miles on non-paved local trails. An Ali Special Interest Group, or SIG, has been created for hiking. Ali members can now plan hikes when Ali classes are not in session. Topics for this lecture will include the benefits of hiking, why we hike, and plenty of specific trails to hike locally near Lake Martin, the Tuskegee National Forest, and Franklin Roosevelt State Park near Pine Mountain, Georgia. Two special guests will be on hand for the presentation. Well-known local environmentalist Carolyn Carr will share some of her fascinating insights regarding the construction of the Bartram Trail in the Tuskegee National Forest and the building of the Pine Mountain Trail in FDR State Park. Tammy Hollis, an Anali yoga instructor, will briefly speak on the health benefits of hiking. So with that, we'll welcome Harold. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it. I don't think I'm going to... How's the microphone? Can you hear okay? Okay, because I... So this is, uh, this is my first uh, effort at doing all this, and Olivia back there has been a tremendous help. At 11 o'clock last night, I put my final slides together, emailed it to her, can't send, the file's too large. So I uh, had trouble going to sleep there for a while. So I come in an hour earlier and she gets it all figured out, so thank you, Olivia, for doing all this. So these are some key words up here, staying active, and, and there's really a a bit of a misnomer in, in what we just said about, and it was my fault, Tammy isn't really going to talk about hiking. She's going to talk about moving. And, and I, I just found a great slide last night to introduce that. She moves through yoga. She has hiked with us. And, and, and it's, it's like uh, sitting is the new smoking. Have you heard that? How bad it is to sit all the time. So th the point is we need to get up and, and move. And day hiking, we're going to kind of define that. Greater Auburn, I'm going to talk about, I think, 12 destinations within about 70 miles of Auburn. Now, at each destination, there are multiple hikes, as we'll point out. And then finally, if you have, and I'll hang around here afterwards, you can, you can ask some questions as we go. Uh, you don't need to wait to the end, and we'll try to keep them quick questions, quick answers if you have them. You can always email me, and, and a couple people who can be here today said, could you please send me the list, and, and, I, and I'm sure I can do that. So there's a little bit of brief introduction. Here's what we're going to talk about. Um, each, each one of these topics, the bulk of it is, is, is the last one about where we're going to hike. But, but I, I did grow up in Indiana, raised my family. Um, you talk about a, I, I, in north central Indiana. So as I, as I stood in my yard in, on, on the farm, and, and looked, all I saw was flat cropland. So in 1976, Debbie and I went out west for the first time. Um, we, we flew to San Francisco, drove up to a meeting in Oregon, and, and oh my gosh, I had the Oregon coast, the west slope of the Cascades, the Willamette Valley, the east slope, and the high desert. And I saw more biodiversity right there than I'd probably seen my entire life. But it was a great place to raise a family. 
We, uh, both kids were out of college and married. We went to Florida for 13 years. Um, we, we had our, our daughter got married and was, was here in Auburn, graduated from Auburn. Um, uh, our son was able to get a job here four years ago, so now we have all of us here in Auburn, five grandkids, two kids and family. So that brings us up to end. Ollie was love at first sight. I knew it existed before I got here. And Debbie and I jumped in with both feet and we've been a, a big supporter of Ollie. Um, we're going to talk about, uh, a lot of people ask me, well, how do you define a hike? Like, you know, um, and, and I, I'll give you my definition, but that, that's just uh, what we try to do. And uh, Tammy is, is going to talk about the movement part in a bit. Um, what do we, I talk with my, the people who hike with us about what, what do you want in a hike? So we're going to cover that briefly. Technology uh, is simpler than you think, but very powerful, as are the smartphone apps. Um, I'll talk a little bit about, um, I actually saw, you know, they used to publish our catalog, had AUM Ollie classes in it. And I saw that they offered, this was two, three, four years ago, three or four years ago. Somebody down there offered a class in day hiking. So I called them and talked to them. I thought, what the heck, I'll try it. And it's, it's been accepted pretty well. And um, we're going to spend most of our time on uh, where to go. That's the title of the talk. And we're going to give you plenty of places to explore. And Carolyn uh, has come to, I heard Carolyn, my first big exposure to Carolyn was when she taught the uh, National Parks Ken Burns DVD course. It was great. And I was just awed by the this, this stories that she could tell and the facts she could recite. And she has come in uh, and talked to our hiking class before uh, about these two trails that she has some personal involvement in developing. So you're going to really enjoy uh, what Carolyn has to say. So let's, let's do some just a few terms. Uh, if somebody starts and hikes the Appalachian Trail, start to finish, that's a through hiker. Um, and and uh, uh, very few people actually get that done when they start. You know, that's not for me. A section hiker is somebody who say, well, I'm gonna, this year I'm gonna do uh, all the Appalachian Trail in Georgia, or all, the, all of it through, uh, you know, a couple other states. So they're doing sections at a time. We're, I'm just, in our classes, we're day hikers. Our goal is to, for the most part, to do uh, four to seven miles a day. I, ain't, I don't, we haven't done seven yet. Um, six is about the most we've done. We just did that uh, this term. And what happens when you get a dozen people out there, um, it's, we start going like this. And, and it's, it's hard to, uh, uh, but by, and by the time we drive, maybe an hour someplace, unload, get back. Um, so it's hard for us to get over six or seven miles. And, and the big thing is natural surfaces. Um, you won't see Kiesel Park on my list because a lot of that's paved. We did Kiesel Park one time because it was raining and we were able to do a couple miles there, is either that or nothing. So we did that. But uh, that's, again, that's part of, so my definition of day hiking is somewhere around that four to seven mile range and mostly on a natural surface. I sure, I don't like walking, I walk my dog every day on concrete. I don't like it. Uh, I'd much rather walk on a natural surface. And there are three kind of type, three, three types of hikes once we get there. Some are just, it's, it's just straight line, well, you hike, to a destination, you turn around and hike back. That's it, your only choice. That's called the out and back. And when you're researching hikes, you gotta be careful because if it says it's a three mile hike, does that mean three miles there and three miles back or a mile and a half? And, and, and honestly, there's a lot of confusion and sometimes you gotta do a little digging to know if, if that's feasible or not. A shuttle hike, we did this uh, last Wednesday, last Thursday over at FDR State Park. We did the last five miles of the Pine Mountain Trail. We parked one car at one end, one car at the other end, and we hiked five miles, and then came back, got the cars, and, and came home. So um, my favorite hike, though, is, is a loop hike, because everybody can park at the same spot, and you hike a loop, and you, you never walk over the same ground twice. So you're always looking at something new and different. So that's, that's my favorite hike. But, Sometimes those are not available. Why do we hike? Um, I'll, I'll show you a couple of, of things. I, I kind of get fascinated with these uh, approaches that, that people take. But, but simply, there, there's the, the serenity, the mental benefits of hiking, the, the Japanese and Yoko. I don't think Yoko is here. But she, uh, she says, oh, I'm familiar with this term right here. But 
we have to keep, we, we like to have a pace when we're walking of around two miles an hour. That doesn't include the brakes. Uh, we stop and take some brakes. But this forest bathing is, uh, your, your speed is the last thing you're thinking about. You just, you go out in the woods and you stand there and you look and you uh, uh, spend some time just absorbing the, uh, the peaceful, uh, serene atmosphere of the forest. So you'll see articles about that, there, even at certification now <laughs> for about everything, including that. There's a, uh, uh, actually I'll have a picture to you too. There's a Scottish uh, article, which Carol was, uh, uh, one of our hikers was proud of, that Scottish doctors are recommending a hike in the woods as an alternative to, um, uh, you know, maybe some medicines for certain issues. And, and I wanna tell you um, a, a story uh, that happened to me last Friday with, with a veteran. But, but I put moving in here because this is what Tammy's gonna talk to us pretty quick about hiking is just one way of, of moving. To me, the most boring thing to do to try to get exercise is a treadmill in your house. So I would, I would much rather walk outside on a non-paved surface. Uh, whoops, oh boy, there we go. So here, here was this article, uh, Japanese practice of Shinrin-yoku, uh, nature's restorative health benefits. There's all kinds of stuff out here uh, about that on the internet. And here's the Scottish doctors prescribe uh, nature prescriptions uh, to, to try to help people grasp with uh, a lot of the troubles they have nowadays. So what happened last Friday, uh, it was Veterans Day celebration at, um, we have two granddaughters in one of the local elementary schools. So they, so I'm a veteran, so I was sitting up there and sitting beside a guy, I'm, I'm guessing 30 plus or minus. And he introduced himself and shook hands and we're just talking a little bit and out of the clear blue, he says, yeah, he says, I'm dealing with some problems. He says, the PTSD thing, he'd been in, um, you know, the Gulf War setting. Um, he's going to Tuskegee for some counseling and, and here's what gets me, he says, he says, uh, one way I deal with that, he says, I go hiking. He says, I'd love to hike. He says, I've hiked 900 miles of the Appalachian Trail. He says, I hope I can get back s sometime to finish it. I thought, oh my gosh, you know, that's just amazing. That, because I had never mentioned the word hike, and he just tells me that out of the clear blue. So I thought that was a, a pretty neat story. So <clears throat> I, 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 it, this is one of those beauty in the eye of the beholder things. But uh, kind of hard to argue with a lot of these things. Um, Trees, mountains, be and I added prairie because this um, 5,000, we've, the last two summers, Debbie and I and our dog have done these 5,000 mile loops. Well, this summer, we they basically did a prairie loop. Um, South Dakota, North Dakota, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and back down. And the prairie was a fascinating place. I, I got one picture of the dog, it's just short, it was short grass prairie. So, you know, and it sounds kind of boring, but honest to goodness, it was, a, it was a, a kind of interesting experience. So that can be nice too. Water, of course, rock features, elevation change. The 13 years in Florida, it's hard to find. <laughs> a lot of Florida is so darn flat, it really gets boring. So we really enjoy the uh, ups and downs. I'm gonna show you a lot, a lot more about ele elevation. And believe me, we have a, a fair amount of it right here too. What, what does it work? Um, last, last Thursday's hike was a little bit unique in that the first three of those five miles, I'd never done. And I usually, I, don't, I won't take somebody out unless I've hiked it before. Sometimes I do it by myself, sometimes people go with me. But the, the Pine Mountain Trail, and I've been on quite a bit of it, more than half of it, is so darn good and so well marked, I thought, you know, I can get by. And, and sure enough, it, it worked out fine. But what doesn't work? Uh, I, I'm not gonna mention the site. It's not very far away from town. It's in a community that has a few miles of trails provided for the people who live in that community. And I thought, this sounds great. So the lady who lives there took me out. Um, we checked them out and you know, it just, a lot of times you, you were looking at a, a pond and you were seeing houses and you were hearing cars and I, I don't know, it just, it, it just, so once in a while, oh, another one was, um, we're gonna talk about some trails up near the Lake Martin Dam. And there's two main ones up there. And we did a big loop hike. And, and I'll show you some pictures of that and it's great. The second trail is in, uh, goes right through the middle of the loop. And it's, it's an out and back trail. And I did it 
kind of early summer, and um, you walk through some rice aways, you, you're walking through grass, I got a nice bunch of chiggers as a result of it, and it, it wasn't that scenic, so I thought, you know what, I'm glad I did this, because I'm not gonna take the group out there. I, I think we can find other things that, that we like better. So there, once in a while, there are some things that, that don't work very well for us. Um, some of the people that hike with us have, like, I don't know, GPS watches or Apple watches, and this is just a cheap old Fitbit knockoff. Uh, I kind of, I'm interested in how many steps I take a day, but it's no big deal. But my point is, those things are nice, and I'm not putting them down at all, but uh, I would, n number two, I, I have read and, and wholeheartedly agree, it's amazing what you could do with a smartphone that probably every one of you have right now. And we're gonna talk about some of those apps, most of which are free. The most I've, I've, I've spent money on one hiking app and I spent $20, not $20 a year, $20. So what you can do with, uh, with apps is pretty amazing. Uh, so, and, 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 and this is basically verifies this. Um, you do, don't need, oh, that's an, this is another big thing. We're, I want to mention offline navigation. You can take your smartphone and you can go out on any of these trails um, sometimes without um, you know, buying anything else. And, and with a free app, you'll, you'll see some pictures after a bit. You'll see where you hike, you'll see all the elevation changes, you'll see how many calories you burned, you'll see the total elevation. By the way, if you uh, walk up, 10 feet in elevation and back down 20. And you, every time, um, you don't take the highest elevation minus the lowest. You, you gotta give yourself credit for all of those up elevations. And, and that's really the work that you put in and these apps do it for you uh, automatically. So make sure you, before you go out and, you know, unless you just want, want to go buy something, but make sure you understand what your phone can do for you. So let's look at some of these um, apps right now. So the only one, the third one right there, Gaia, uh, that, uh, that was my $20 uh, well spent. So I'm going to show you some examples uh, right now of what these can do for you. All trails I like for a couple of reasons. It's a free app and, and I, uh, the one thing I use it for is see the reviews over there. Actually that's where we're hiking tomorrow, Cherokee Ridge Alpine Trail. 85 reviews, that's a lot. Four and a half stars, that's pretty darn good. And uh, you'll be able to you know, this is just one screenshot, but there's some, there's some of that elevation information down there at the bottom. Tells you it's a loop trail, uh, distance, and all, that, all that's free. Now see the stuff, it says pro up there. There's a paid version, which will, um, you, you get more things, but you don't have to. And that shows you the, the trail that that particular person walked. And we're not gonna walk that, don't get too concerned, we're not gonna walk that particular trail tomorrow, uh, but anyway, um, this is a, a free app right here. This is one called Run Keeper. Uh, I think it's one word, it's free. Um, and, and it, uh, again, this is a Cherokee Ridge, that might be the Deadening Trail right there, but <clears throat> there's your mile markers, I'm sure that's the Deadening Trail. On Lake Martin again, um, it doesn't show some of the stats, but it'll tell you how many miles you walked, and it'll tell you elevation change too, and the route that you walked. Now, you gotta be a little careful here. This is Run Keeper, but <clears throat> if you look at that Y axis on your left, it is always the same dimension, which means if you don't, see that's not five, 684 feet. Well, what's 681 minus 520? It's not anywhere near six. But look, all that up and down, and up and down, and up and down. That's the, that's the deadening trail right there. And, and those of you who've done it know that you get, uh, that last mile, you're getting pretty darn tired of going up and down and up and down. But it's a heck of a workout. But if you do a different trail, um, that y-axis is gonna be the same height. So you, you gotta, uh, just to look at that, looks like it's terribly uh, steep and uh, you just gotta dig into it a little bit deeper, but hey, for free, it's a darn, and of course you got mileage down there on the base. This is, uh, again, uh, this is the Dowdell Knob Trail at FDR State Park, 
And this is a screenshot uh, from my Gaia app, G-A-I-A. -A. That's what I paid $20 for one time. And <clears throat> I, I sit in my living room with my Wi-Fi, and I download the map for that area. Then when I go out there, I don't have to use any data. on my. I, Debbie and I share two gigs of data, so, uh, and that's not very much. So, uh, and we don't even come close to, to even using it because when I go out there and turn it on, it's going to show me uh, anywhere I'm at along this, there's the trail right there. It'll show me where I'm at, um, tell me some other statistics, and it's working strictly off a of GPS. And that aspect of your phone is free after you pay your monthly phone bill. So uh, navigating with, without using data is an amazing thing that your phone is capable of doing. Um, this is the last place, when Carolyn's been talking, this is the last place, and I, I'm really excited about this. Um, I, I went up here and checked this out a week and a half ago, and uh, we're going to do a, a day trip up there between terms. Um, so keep an eye out for some information about that. But this is uh, that Gaia app again, and that red route is what I actually uh, hiked up there. And on another page, it gives me some statistics about it. This is, um, that's actually my house right there, where we live at the south end, of the very south end of Grove Hill, and we look out at this 200 acres here, and this is one of our hiking destinations, the Lake Wilmore Trail. Um, it, it's, a, it's a great little place. It's two miles. And sometimes w that's a power line right away that you're looking at right here. And sometimes when I'm out, I, I just, and I try to look ahead of time where I'm going to be, have a feel for it. But if, if I want to know, well, I wonder how far I am from a, a stream or a, a street or a power line right away. And I just go to Google Maps, but I turn on the satellite function instead of the the uh, regular uh, default map function. But that's just plain old Google. Apple Maps will do the same thing. Y you'll never hear me talk about the Android versions. I think they're very similar, but I've never had an Android phone. So I, I, I'm not, but, but I think they're pretty darn similar. And uh, now Doug Lewis has, um, Doug and I hiked with an interesting lady up in the uh, Chiha Wilderness a couple weeks ago. And she was huge on this Avenza Maps. And, and Doug has used it. Uh, I don't know anything about it. She sold on it. Uh, there's a no-cost version for it, too. But I just showed this so that you've, you've got a name for it right there. But I really can't tell you anything about it. Doug down here could, could tell you something. Uh, so we started this. Uh, um, we're just, uh, tomorrow's the last hike. And we've completed one full Ollie cycle by starting last year, winter term, spring term, fall term. Um, we'll, uh, we'll go, let's see. Oh, so we did the winter term. We did the spring term. It, I changed it in the fall. So many people were signing up, and we couldn't get in. And some other people couldn't do four to six or seven miles. So I tried something different. The first four weeks of this fall term are pretty warm. And I wasn't crazy about doing longer hikes anyway uh, in those warm weather. So we tried a, 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 a morning and an afternoon. And some of you here were in that. We stayed closer to town, and we did basically two-mile hikes instead of uh, – and, we, and we, I, I almost didn't want to use the word hiking, so I called it a walk in the park. And we did places like Carrere and Chihuahua, uh, things that were close by. And now the second four weeks when it cooled off, we're, we're, we're wrapping up tomorrow, uh, the fourth of our uh, four conventional hikings, the same way we approached it uh, in the other two terms. And uh, <clears throat> for the winter and spring terms coming up, I'm not going to offer the walk in the park again. We're going to go back to the regular day hikings. I may do that same walk in the park thing next fall when it's warm again, but I'm thinking about taking a, a little different approach with, with it. Um, now, we're getting close to where uh, Tammy's going to uh, talk about this. And, I, and again, for her benefit, I'm, I'm using moving here. But I, wanna, I, I found this late last night. I said, oh, my gosh, this is great. Eight, eight simple tips to live longer and healthier. And look at number one, move. 
so Tammy, you can talk about the benefits of movie. All right, thank you, Harold. Um, you know, when Harold asked me to do this, I'm by no means an expert, and I am by no, no means going to say anything probably that you haven't heard before. And he, I could walk away with that number one there and walk away, and that would be enough. I did want to start today with a, I'm a quote person because I teach yoga a lot. So I wanted to start with a quote today from Sarah Louise Arnold that said, Wholesome exercise in the free air, under the wide sky, in the best, is the best medicine for body and spirit. What more can you say about that and how it ties into the hiking? Um, but one of the things I did want to mention, the CDC and the uh, American Heart Association, if you look around, you don't, have to, you don't have to live under a rock out on a hiking trail, no pun intended, to look around at everyday literature and you see bombarded, we're bombarded with information about staying active and moving. This is just a journal I subscribe to and it just so happened that in yesterday's newspaper there was an article about new exercise guidelines. I'm not going to go over all that. If there's anyone that would like for me to send you a PDF version of the new CDC guidelines, I will do that. But the recommendations tell us that we should be getting between 150 to 300 minutes of exercise a week. And that can be any form or fashion. And even as we age, they're also bumping up the recommendations for young children, or even as young as age three to age six, because of the obesity crisis that our nation faces. And, um, you know, the physiological aspects of exercise are just very, very um, obvious. But one of the things that um, you'll see is um, a lot of times in my past work life, I saw lots and lots of younger and younger people facing disease states that could have been changed or decreased because of just incorporating exercise and movement into their daily life. Um, it can lower your blood pressure, of course, your blood glucose, your cholesterol level, um, stronger bones, uh, quicker recovery from illness when you do get sick, and of course, mental clarity is a big thing, and then longevity. Um, but when you do think about going out to exercise, and, and the rule of thumb is some movement is better than no movement at all. Again, that number one can say it all. Um, but when you do think about moving, if you can try to build in a multi-component type of exercise where you incorporate several different components of strength training, aerobic activity and balance. Balance is a big thing and we're thankful that Ollie offers some classes that can help us with our balance also. Um, but hiking is a very good, it can incorporate all three of those things. Your aerobic activity, if you're on a, a very long good stretch and you want to start really hauling it, you can get your heart rate up. If, you, if you're Keith Campania, you do that anyway. If you've ever been in uh, hiking with Keith. Um, also, just the strength building, because you're, you're load bearing, you're, you're bearing your body weight when you're out walking, and especially if you're climbing, if you're, um, if you're moving up some steep um, terrain. And also just balance, because a lot of times we're, um, we're, we're trying to put one foot and, and we've got one foot off the ground and we're using poles, but it, did, it does enhance your ability to incorporate balance into the activity too. So anytime you can incorporate those three principles into any activity you do, and as we age, of course you have to kind of accommodate for any issues that you may have for, as far as health issues, but you do, um, it is recommended too that you stay, you try to get some aerobic activity in, and the rule of thumb used to be 10 minutes, at least 10 minutes of aerobic activity, but now it's even just short spurts of activity, aerobic activity, which could mean if you've ever heard of high intensity interval training, that's a good, um, it could incorporate aerobics, weight, weight training, and of course balance. Um, but 
I just can't emphasize enough that, of course, we're at the other spectrum of the, of the aging process for most of us, and we're not in those age ranges that I saw disease states happen, but it's never too late to incorporate exercise and movement into your day and get that 150 minutes or 300 minutes is great if you can incorporate that much. And if you go on a hike, one hike knocks out a lot of that, um, a, a lot of that in one day. So, um, but I do encourage you to keep moving. Um, there's a couple of other quotes I wanted to end with. Um, let's see if there's anything else that I wanted to talk about. Oh, I wanted to mention if you're interested in the new CDC guidelines, I have a PDF document that outlines just the section for um, older adults, and I'll be glad to send that to you in a PDF file instead of killing all of our trees and um, so we can enjoy them when we're hiking. But I'll be glad to send that to you, and if you'd like to write your name down on a, or an email address, I can send that to you. Um, but just a couple of more quotes to kind of end um, what I have to say. And again, it's not anything you haven't heard. Exercise should be fun, otherwise you won't be consistent with it. And when, when I was in my work world, I constantly told people, find something you enjoy, because if you enjoy it, it will give you a reason and you'll want to get up and do it. If you don't like it, you're not going to want to do it. So find what works for you. If hiking is the thing, yoga, swimming. I thought about swimming when we were coming in because of the rain. Um, and think about exercises. This, this sounds a little bit grim, but it's very true. Those who do not find time for exercise will have to find time for illness. And that's from Earl of Derby. So um, just think about incorporating that time into your day. Make it as if it's a doctor's appointment you can't miss. Show up and find what works for you and um, find you're healthy. So I'm the token guy in the yoga class. I'm the only guy in the yoga class. But I, I, and I'd never done it before in my life. And this is the second or third time, but. I'm, I'm sold, it, it's just great. I don't have the discipline to, I'm disciplined about some things, not about stretching. So Tammy makes me stretch once a week and it's really good. So uh, we're gonna visit some of these places and this is, this really, this is not a gimmick here. I carry this with me every time because we're not gonna talk about something that's really important, which is, um, oh, help me, 10, 10, 10. Ten essentials, thank you, whoever <laughs> said that. Um, I got most of the ten essentials in here. And, and the ten essentials is uh, like the, this whistle on the, on the uh, back here. There's uh, mylar blankets in here. There's navigation aids like compasses. Uh, most are all, there's some safety things. Uh, most of uh, all of that's in here. We've never had to use it, hope we never do. But uh, in case, I carry it uh, with me. Um, these, there's some good stories here. Um, how many of you been to the theater that's, that's going on right now? Truman Capote's, uh, nobody's seen that yet? You saw it last night. So they, okay, uh, some of you, yeah, Brett, you were there. So, uh, um, so, so there's a place where the young Truman Capote and his older uh, cousin are gonna go out and cut their Christmas tree. And they're, they're waiting, of course everything's, uh, exaggerated in the theater. So they're wading through the stream. So I'm thinking, it looked just like us the last two weeks. Two weeks ago, we were trying to cross Moore's Mill Creek in Chihuahua State Park, and uh, we, it was a challenge. It was really a challenge. And then this last week at FDR, we crossed several s smaller streams, much easier. But these poles, I I'm more and more of a believer. Um, for many years, I didn't use poles, I didn't get it. I would see people using poles. And then one day up in the Smokies, my feet went out from underneath me and I threw my hand out and couldn't take my wedding ring off for a year because of swelling. And if you talk to people who use poles religiously, a bunch of them will say, it was the accident that did it. So I can think right now of four people who have fallen, one including myself, one, one guy took one of our other people with him, but we won't share any names there. Um, so uh, it, it's, uh, anyway, uh, and I used to say to people, 
If two poles gives you 100% extra or whatever, one pole might give you 75 or 80. But I don't know, on crossing those creeks, I think a lot of times two is, is a big help. Now, I put tips on these. If you take the tip off, it's, it's a point. And I usually um, do the point so it gets some good grip. But if you're on a lot of rock, then uh, the rubber tip's fine too. But uh, if any of you ever hike with me, I always carry at least three sets of extra poles. So, you know, don't go out and, and buy a set right away. And, and anything works. We had some, our grandkids in the Smokies one time, and we were going to do a little hike, and we stopped along the roadside, and we bought tobacco sticks for a dollar apiece. And they just had a, a little tobacco stick as a pole. So, uh, but anyway, these are, these are a big help. And, and the other thing, <clears throat> um, people, I haven't harped so much on, on clothing, but people have heard me do this. Um, take my word that there's no pure cotton on my body anywhere today. Because I wanted to show you what I hike in. Uh, no, I'm not going to show you. So, um, wool sock, and I, I'm huge on this. Uh, these are trail shoes, but still, they're, they're New Balance tennis shoes that I buy for $60 or something, a pair, and wool socks. And at Chihuahua, I'm helping people across the creek, and I just, you know what, just, just stand in the water and, and help people across. You walk right out of the water. The wa I've never, never had a blister hiking, and I attribute it to shoes that let the water go out, in and out, and once in a while, I, I, I did a hike one day where I, I took my shoes off and wrung the water out of my socks, my wool socks. But I didn't even do that at Chihuahua last year. So, um, uh, but anyway, um, all this stuff is breathable. And we've hiked in so much rain the last three weeks, but the, the way you're moving, like Tammy was talking, and it was light rain, and honest to goodness, it was in equilibrium. And I never did get wet. Um, we have people that wear regular old blue jeans, and I love blue jeans, but I'm not a fan of hiking in blue jeans. And you know, a lot of stuff in hiking is no big deal, again, until it is. And if you get tomorrow, well now, tomorrow, it's gonna be in the 40s and windy. And it's, it's when you get in certain conditions that you don't want something to go wrong. And so I don't know, I just, I just err on, I'd rather err on the conservative side and be comfortable and, uh, uh, anyway, I, I, I do have my favorites when it comes to uh, clothing and equipment. Now, let's uh, take a look at, uh, oh, what I'm going to show you, <coughs> some people I saw taking notes, and that's great, but another thing you can do, for instance, is uh, get your camera and just take a picture of the screen sometimes. If you, want, if you want a list of something, instead of jotting it all down, because I'm going to leave this, and I won't come back to that list. <clears throat> so we're going to start close to Auburn, and then we're going to move further away. And we always carry water hiking, and I knew I was going to need it today. Um, I can remember in Florida, <clears throat> somebody uh, was offering a class in using these sticks and it's not it's not that big a deal a lot of it's common sense but there are some things you are supposed to put your hands through these loops to use it right i should adjust these a little bit tighter and you're not supposed to um, use only your hand grip for all the the benefit here so uh, oh, I want, before i pose this question raise your hand if you've ever been in one of the hiking classes Raise it up there. So look around. See there? We got, we got a lot of people here who have hiked. So <clears throat> anybody, feel, anybody can feel free. Which is riskier, going uphill or going downhill? Downhill, absolutely. Going downhill is where you're going to get hurt most of the time. You're, and if you think about it, so you're going downhill, your weight's forward, and if you fall, envision what's going to happen. If you're going uphill, you're leaning into that slope, and if you fall, you're going to fall a lot shorter distance. Your feet are much more likely to go out from underneath you. So the rule of thumb on these is to have, and these should be a little bit higher, the rule of thumb is that this is at a right angle right here. So um, you, you, know, you can go like this. You can do it every other one. You can go like this. When it gets flat, sometimes I just carry it. Um, uh, you, 
a balance. We, when, since we're always on natural surfaces, there's a lot of rocks and there's a lot of roots. And you're just kind of going like this. It, it almost comes natural. It's not like you need to take a course in how to use them. These were a gift. These are expensive. I would never bought these for myself. And one of the things that makes them expensive is they're like weight. But one of the arguments for using these is you get more of an upper body workout if you use poles too. So there's plenty of benefits in, in using poles. But um, Debbie took a couple of neighbor ladies hiking here a couple of weeks ago. One had never used a pole before, and, and she just said, wow, you know, that's great. I'm going to have to get me one of those. So if, if you haven't done it, uh, you can borrow one or two of mine and use them. But I highly recommend them. And thanks for asking the question. That's the first one we've had. So um, it was really wet. Uh, during one of our first four weeks, and I could hike at Crayer when I couldn't hike any place else. Um, so not only is Crayer close by, um, so let's start looking at these things. Crayer's just out here on North College. There's a North lot and a South lot, but the many there's where you park. But there's so many nice things about Crayer besides being close. You got wide trails, you got a whole bunch of trails. And if you get out there, uh, there's all kinds of maps. If you want to hike one mile, it'll show you a route. If you want to hike two, if you want to hike, you know. Um, th there's just a lot of neat things about Crayer. Um, you can't take your dog there. That's one disadvantage, because I like to take my dog once in a while. But uh, this is, uh, again, one of the hikes that we did in the first four weeks. Um, it was only 1.6 miles. But, uh, and that's, by the way, that's that intersection up there. Um, where they're uh, considering uh, a roundabout because that Farmville Road is 72 and 147 is North College, that dangerous intersection. But uh, the, the Crayer Nature Preserve is, is a great, oh, and, and look at, um, that's that free run keeper. So 1.59 miles, a again, that, some of these will tell you how much your total time is and some of the apps We'll break that up into time that you were moving and the time that you were stopped. Um, the minutes per mile, I, that doesn't mean too much to me, but the 171 calories. So again, you know, all of that is, is uh, free stuff. Um, this is a, a close to town. If you know where the Publix is, down at uh, Moores Mill and Ogletree, you, you head uh, south out of town on Moores Mill Road another mile and on your left is, is this demonstration forest that's owned and managed by uh, the university. We hike out there occasionally. Uh, the problem is that this, uh, this is the only place I'm gonna show you that you can't go by yourself. Those gates are open sometimes, but uh, that's not really open to the public, but it is close to town. Um, a lot of times we're walking on a forest road um, I, I took a prescribed fire class, which I really enjoyed. And one of the reasons you're seeing such open understory there is uh, that area gets burned every year. Uh, the Lake Wilmore Trail, that's, uh, Lake Wilmore used to be, Lake Wilmore doesn't exist. I drove myself crazy trying to find Lake Wilmore. And uh, Bill and others finally told me that, well, that used to be, I guess, the water source for the city of Auburn. Uh, but they took the dam out, and now it's Lake Ogletree. But they're getting ready to make a park uh, out of, of this. And the uh, trailhead and the parking is uh, right uh, next to Ogletree Elementary School. And it's not uncommon for us to hike on mountain bike trails. Chihuahua is full of mountain bike trails, too full of mountain bike trails. And the, the neat thing about this is you see the two yellow dots, one yellow. So if you um, park, walk into here where it starts, they've taken a relatively small piece of ground of 40 or 50 acres, and they go like this. And sometimes the darn trail is so close, you look over there, and, you know, 15 feet away, there's the trail. But they get two mi there's a two-mile loop right here in a, a really small um, uh, area, and, and you can take your dog, and, and this is a, a nice place to hike. I kind of got excited one time. I thought, ah, easy and easy and challenging. Well, that that represented a stretch of about 15 feet, and it was for the bikers, and all it was was a pile of rocks. So, um, I saw that uh, my excitement kind of dwindled when I saw that. 
Um, Chihuahua State Park, I'm, I'm beginning to develop a, a better appreciation for Chihuahua. It's so darn close, and you know how that is. Sometimes your back door, you take it for granted sometimes. But um, there, of course, there's the waterfall. But, but look at that. I mean, that's, it's kind of overkill. And the very first hike I took, the very first time I offered this, was probably the poorest job I ever did. And we had a group, and, and I told them ahead of time, I said, now look, we're gonna, we're gonna get in one place over in here, and I, I know I wanna end up up here, and we're gonna have to get off the trail, but don't worry, and, but some of them worried anyway. And uh, I, I'm just amazed that people have to sometimes cross a creek or get off a trail and they get panicky or something. But, um, but, but anyway, uh, look over here at something kind of interesting, and if you pay your money, oh, here we go, hiker optimized. So we were out here a couple weeks ago, and oh, I know another thing I want to tell you. If you, if you can read a contour map, this is, if you drive into the park, uh, this is as far as you can go at the back end, that back pavilion. And of course, there's the waterfall right there, where the college kids like to hang out. But a couple years ago, um, I, I was going to climb what they call a 14er out in Colorado. There's 50 some, 14,000 or 14 and a half thousand foot peaks. So I, I thought, okay, I'm going to train a little bit. And where am I going to train around here? So you see that? The closer together those contour lines are, the steeper the ground. So that's the steepest thing that I can find in this county that I we got public access for. So I just went out here and I'd, I'd go up and down that a half a dozen times. And uh, it, it's steep, it's rocky, and you need poles, and you're kind of climbing sometimes over things. But if you ever want to train for something, it's, it's a great place to do that. Uh, so we, uh, we used a strategy because the probability of rain a couple weeks ago was so high, we parked our, uh, part of our cars down here and part up here uh, because there was a shelter there. And then we started hiking. We hiked along. We got up to here. We decided to go up there. There's where we crossed it somewhere up there. We crossed that creek, and that got a little bit tricky. But we all got across, and nobody fell completely in. Somebody got a leg wet, I think. But, but anyway, we got a good challenging, it's only about two and a half miles, but under the circumstances, it was a lot better than uh, not hiking at all. So Chihuahua really does have uh, a lot going on out there, and I need to make better use of it, probably. Uh, within, now we're gonna start going out a little bit from town. The Tuskegee National Forest is the smallest national forest in the United States. So that's, that's kind of neat. Um, we've, uh, We've, we've hiked out there a little bit, and here's a nice map of it. What we've done is uh, we've, the, the Bartram Trail, which is part of what Carolyn is, is going to uh, talk to you about, is what you're seeing right here. It's about 8.4 miles long. As a matter of fact, if you go out um, from the museum and turn left on college uh, and just keep going straight, you'll get to that parking lot right there. So uh, 29 is, uh, is South College Street. And we did it in two four-mile sections, basically. Uh, we did it this part first and this part second. There's, uh, uh, you know, I told you about checking out trails. Well, I checked out this trail right here, which is kind of a mountain bike trail. But it was so, at the time I checked it out, it was so overgrown that uh, I didn't think it was good for us. There's another trail up here, which is an equestrian trail. And that, I really haven't checked that one out that thoroughly. But there's some longleaf pine out here. These two four mile sections are quite different. You can see here, your, what's the name of that creek, Bill? Chalk the Fall <coughs> Creek. Actually on Google Maps, it's got the wrong name on it. So you can't always believe what you read on a map. So this part of the section, you're hiking some nice stuff along the creek. There's some nice rock formations right in here. And then when you get in this second half, you're looking at some beautiful longleaf pine. Uh, we also wore some red vests because it's half the year, I think, is hunting season in Alabama. And we, it was hunting season. Now, if everybody obeys by the rules, they're not supposed to be hunting that close to the trail, but you know how that goes. But anyway, that's, uh, that's not very far from town. There's I-85. So that's a nice resource that you should explore. Um, 
the Bartram Trail, I'm gonna let Carolyn <coughs> talk about Bartram and a little a bit of who he was, but a fascinating character. Uh, there's, uh, the, uh, you'll, you'll see that, we're gonna talk about the Penhody Trail after a bit. A lot of these trails have, this is called a blaze. A blaze is just a, a way to mark a trail. And it's, there, there's some very interesting things that they do with blazes that tell you, is it, are you turning right, are you turning left, are you going straight? Uh, there'll be connector trails that are marked in a different color. But what they've used out here are actually are uh, uh, aluminum nailed onto the tree. And we went out there one time and uh, I was checking out a hike and, and it kept getting messed up. Well, they had changed the trail and hadn't changed the blazes. So uh, Keith and I took it upon ourselves to go out there with a, a hammer and some nails. And we, we corrected it without asking permission. And Carolyn would tell you about doing something on a trail without asking permission. So I had a good precedence right there. Okay, um, now we're gonna go a little bit further out, 30 to 40 miles. How many of you have been to Smith Mountain Fire Tower? A lot of people, yeah, there you go. Um, <clears throat> you need to check out CRATA, is Cherokee Ridge Alpine Trail Association dot org. Um, that's a great website and they have some really good maps with the exception of where we're going tomorrow, which is, whoops, 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 whoops. Um, this, uh, the, the Cherokee Ridge Alpine Trail, and I even had Doug check, we can't, we can't find a, a good map online. Um, but <clears throat> the first four of these are managed by this great group of people right here. And then um, we'll talk about West Point, which is a new destination for us, uh, just across the line into Georgia. So all this is less than an hour from Auburn. So here's, uh, there's where you park. There's where one person knocked over another person one day on the hike. And there's a fire tower that we climbed up to the top of. But look at, look at all the different hikes out here. Um, there's actually Island Hop Trail, gold. Um, I guess it does show it. When they drop the lake down, um, when the lake's up, you, you can't get from this, this is, these are islands. But this is this photo's taken, and the lake's down, and you can walk across those mud flats to those different islands. But um, <clears throat> it just goes to show you, you know, you could do three or four different hikes out here, and, and really not duplicate anything. So uh, again, FDR and Lake uh, FDR State Park and Lake Lake Martin in general are, are the home to a whole bunch of hikes. And here was our first. Um, uh, hike on, on in that area up there. And, and I think, um, having been through three cycles of classes now, Dick Bronson, is that his name, Bill? 84 years old when he hiked that. And I think Dick is the oldest hiker that we've had that I, that I know of. And, uh, and believe me, he could keep up uh, real well with everybody. So um, anyway, we have, oh, this appeared in a, one of Auburn's magazines, but unfortunately, it said we were at Stone Mountain in Georgia. We were really at Smith Mountain in Alabama. Uh, okay, so less than a year ago, this Crater group opened up some brand new trails on, what do they call it, Forever, for, Forever Wildlands. There's around, I think, five or 6,000 acres in this Yates track. Uh, essentially, you can't quite see it, uh, whoops. See, I tore that down. Lake Martin Dam is, is like right up here. There's the Tallapoosa River. So you come in on Gold Mine Road, you park right here, and you've got two major trail options. This is the John B. Scott, I think, Forever Wild Trail, 4.6 miles, something like that loop. Uh, we did that with our group, and you can't read that, but right there is the top of Saddleback Mountain. A uh, beautiful spot. There's some of the signage out there. You know, I told you the one I, I took that I didn't want to go back to with the group. That's this railroad right here. Uh, it went out there and, and ended. Now, eventually, <coughs> that's, they're gonna, they need to build a bridge out there along a creek, across a creek, and then you're going to be able to park here, park down here someplace, and do about six miles shuttle. But right now, you've got to walk out and back, and it just wasn't, you're kind of spoiled once you do that hike right there. Um, but the top of that mountain, there's some of their options out there. 
there's some more signage. But there's a, we, we took a lunch break up there, and, and there's these concrete picnic tables up there that got to be extremely heavy. Well, we finally figured out they, they took them up some old woods roads up there. But that's a beautiful spot, a lot of longleaf pine, and that's, those trails have been open less than a year. So what's next? Aha, this is where we're going tomorrow. Doug and I, check this out. You can't read it, but that says Cherokee Ridge Alpine Trailhead. Uh, this is going to be a four-mile loop. There's plenty of ups and downs and some really beautiful views. of. Uh, uh, there's a picnic area right there. This is Overlook Road. Uh, if some of you are familiar, Bill Sherling is up in that area. Um, <clears throat> so I think we see Goat Island from there. Uh, gosh, there were some azaleas in bloom out there a couple weeks ago. It was, you know, crazy warm weather. But that's another. There's uh, <clears throat> actually we're talking about four different locations on Lake Martin, all of which have multiple trails once you get there. Um, this is the one that I told you if you go to that Credo website, you won't find the trail map. I think it's an oversight, and I need to point it out to them. And this is a poor photograph, but what I want to show you is it's very common <clears throat> for me to go to a trailhead, and, and here you can't see them very well, but in different colors, there are different trails here. And I will, if, if I wasn't able to get a trail map ahead of time, I will take a photograph with my phone and use that to orient myself when I'm out there hiking. And that's a very common thing to do. Ah, this is the toughest one <clears throat> that we've ever done. And uh, anybody who's done it will verify. This is called the, the Deadening Alpine Trail. It's very close to where we're going tomorrow, just a couple miles away. But it's about four miles. And, and you're just kind of having a great time the first three miles, but man, that last mile is, is a killer, and you've already done three. So, and, and for some reason, they want you to hike it in one direction. Um, but this is some of the things you're, you're hiking along the edge. No, this is not the tough part at all. I really don't, I don't have good pictures that will give you an appreciation of the tough part. But here you're along the lake, here you're walking over these spongy rotten boards to get across that little ravine right there. Um, but I mean the rock formations, the mountain laurel in the springtime, unbelievable. Uh, so that's a, the Deadening Alpine Trail. Is, and, but I can give my group credit. <clears throat> when you're out there, again, you, you have to, you can, you can skip the worst part of it, but you say, okay, instead of going like this, let's just go s straight up and we'll, we'll bypass. And they didn't want to do it. They said, nope, we're here, we're going to finish it. So I, I said, okay, and sure enough, they did. So I was proud of them. There's some of the views. Uh, one of the major views, out, if, you, if you know much about the lake, you know where Chimney Rock? Is that? Chimney Rock, okay. I, I hate the way they painted it up. But <clears throat> when you're doing, and I don't like graffiti pictures, so you don't see it. But anyway, that, that tells you where you're at if you're in the Chimney Rock area. There's another view uh, right there. Okay, so this is this was a new place I discovered online. I have these ways, you know, I'll just put in, I'll, I'll do Google searches for things. And <clears throat> this is West Point Lake. So if you <clears throat> head towards Atlanta, as soon as you cross the state line, exit two, you turn right, you head towards Pine Mountain State Park. You turn left, you head towards West Point Lake. Uh, there's the dam at West. Oh, shoot. There's the dam at West Point Lake, and this, of course, is the Chattahoochee uh, River. So uh, we parked right here, I believe, and we made a loop combining two trails. This uh, over to here. We took a lunch break here, and then we did this, and then we did one of these trails. I think we did this blue one right here. Again, there's multiple trails. Technically, they're bike trails, but they work just fine for hiking. And we got back to our car in light rain, and we, did, we, had, we had done six miles. And I think that's the longest one that we've done is this six miles. But it really helps when you take a 30-minute lunch break and catch your breath, and it's not that bad. Uh, a couple times on our trip this summer, Deb and I did six-mile days, 
but again, we broke it up, and it's, it's not that tough. It's not like just doing six miles straight without a break. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, where are you going with this? <laughs> okay. No, it, it, it had multiple bathrooms, and that's nice, and some people appreciate it. However, you'll have to admit, we hike a lot of places without bathrooms, but we still figure out a way that everybody's comfortable with. So don't let that worry you. But this had, oh, I mean, this is a beautiful place. This is, this is an example. It, it, it's worth a drive over there. There's campgrounds over here. There's all kinds of picnic areas. There's plenty of restroom facilities. But look at that. There's a boat ramp. And there's, well, there might be a charge for the campground. But otherwise, there's no charges for any of this stuff. Uh, really great destination. <clears throat> OK, now <clears throat> we're going to talk about FDR State Park. And when I'm done with this, I got one more destination that I'm leaving. But before that, Carolyn's going to uh, uh, do her talks with me. This is, uh, <clears throat> gosh, this is some special place. Um, it's a pretty good drive over there. But there's lots of things you can do over there. The little town is, is, is kind of nice. Um, and I, I think this is a Dowdell Overlook or something. The, the Dowdle Knob. See, I, I'm not obviously not from here, and I don't say it right. So, but they're, they're just like, and one one day we were over there up here, and there were a couple of lady artists had their, I don't know what you call it, set up, and they were doing paintings and stuff like that. So uh, anyway, there's uh, the uh, Pine Mountain geologically, and therefore it's, it's plant life. It, it's just pretty interesting the way it's risen up out of the coastal plain. And as a result, um, it's, it's quite a place. Now, this is, a, this is a really interesting map, too. This is a screenshot of a Google interactive map. And I really haven't played around with it a lot. But it does give us a good perspective. This is mile zero over here. Um, and then the blue is the Pine Mountain Trail, which ends right here. So the hike we did last week, we parked cars uh, right, right in here. And then we parked cars here. And this was five miles. Uh, Cascade Falls was a taller waterfall right here. And between Cascade Falls and the cars were three more uh, shorter waterfalls. Now, the great thing they have done out here is they have made what they call connector trails. And that's what these black things are. So uh, we didn't do, uh, this would have turned a five mile hike into a seven mile hike. And that other two miles wasn't all that scenic. So we, uh, I made an executive decision, we're gonna do a five mile hike here. But you could, do, you could do that loop all by itself. You could include this and make that a loop. Um, this is the Dowdell loop that we did, and we parked right here and hiked and used this connector loop. That was over four miles. Uh, another time, we uh, this is not that red is, uh, uh, oh, I forget the name of that trail, but um, it's uh, around the campgrounds and so forth. And, but you can see it does not include any of the Pine Mountain Trail itself. And then personally, I have, I've done this loop right here, which is half Pine Mountain Trail, half connector loop. But I'm telling you, that, that's just a spectacular, you can spend days out there. And we ran into a couple people in the light rain, and, and they were, they were going, uh, it's a backpacking trail. No charge, although you're supposed to sign up and get a permit to do it. But they were going to backpack out there that night. So a 23-mile trail, you could stay a couple nights and, and, you know, a night or two and have some nice backpacking and nice hiking on this 23-mile trail. Uh, just a couple of pictures. It's one of the best marked trails. Um, the Crater people, as much as I love their hikes, occasionally they don't do the best job of, of marking their twists and turns, and sometimes it can be a little challenging. But I'm telling you, they do a great job, as you can see over here on the left. You get to these intersections, and, and they're telling you right here, you're going to go straight ahead. And, and we knew we started at mile 20, so we knew that we'd done two miles, we had three miles to go. Um, just some of the uh, bridges across the streams. Other places we stepped across rocks. Other places they had boards across the stream. And this is Cascade Falls. That's where we took our lunch break. We did three miles, took a lunch break, did two more miles. And uh, um, on all trails, for instance, of course, reviews are just people's opinions. But 
but the fellow who wrote the reviews called that that five mile loop one of the top hikes in the southeast. And and I have to agree, it's it was pretty darn nice. Uh, now, Carolyn, uh, tell them a little bit about it. Most people uh, know who, but I was so impressed when I heard Carolyn uh, uh, talk, and and I've heard her talk about these topics. So it, it's yours. Ah, oh me. I didn't bring any pictures. I figured you would have seen them. Uh, this is interesting. The, um, it's bringing back all kinds of hiking memories as you were talking about different things. When he was saying, you know, what's a day hike? When I was a guide for the Southern Arizona Hiking Club, we actually had somebody send in a description of a 20-mile day hike. And, and the editor of the Hiking Club Bulletin, which we put out each month, Ordinarily, he never commented on people's descriptions of their hikes, but at the end of that one, it said, folks, don't bring your lunch. You won't have time to eat. <laughs> don't bring your camera. You won't have time for pictures. Just bring your flashlight, because you damn well won't be home before dark. <laughs> And it was true. It was one of these things of you will climb Table Mountain and come down Table Mountain. You will go up Finger Rock and down. It was unbelievable. We just went, why would anybody do that? It's just, you know, like crazy exercise. And I have to say, when you mentioned forest bathing, I thought you were talking about skinny dipping. I really, <laughs> I really did. I thought, oh, is that what they call it in Japan? Forest <laughs> I got in trouble once at a conference. I was on. A, I was giving a talk, and so was uh, Dave Foreman, who founded Earth First. And somebody standing up there said, "Do y'all know each other?" And darn, if Dave said, "Of course I know her. We've been skinny dipping together." <laughs> but and another thing um, about hiking equipment: whatever you do, get the right shoes. I mean, and frankly, whatever works for you. One of my longtime hiking companions in Arizona never wore anything, no matter mountains, swamps, you name it, except Converse high tops. And they worked for him because he had a foot that it just particularly well fitted. So um, I have a really narrow foot and I've always had trouble getting good hiking boots. So be sure to get whatever works right for your feet. But thinking about the uh, Pine Mountain Trail, um, even though it was built after Bartram, since that's what we were just talking about. Um, if you're interested in doing various hikes over there, they have a great website. You can go on uh, the internet and look up Pine Mountain Trail Association, I think, or just the Pine Mountain Trail. And they tell you all about the various hikes and, and everything. So it's, there's a lot of good information out there. Neil Wickham, who was the owner of Wickham's Outdoor World in Columbus, Georgia, um, was the father of the Pine Mountain Trail. Neil kept saying, there's got to be a good place to go hiking around here. And there really was not any designated trails near Columbus. And so he kept working on the, you know, Georgia uh, State Parks people about it. And finally they said, well, okay. And so in 1975, he really started planning and recruiting. And Sam Lyle, that was in the forestry department here at Auburn, and I let ourselves get sucked into this and um, said, okay, we'll, we'll come and help uh, build. And um, it started, I mean, it was laid out, the trail was laid out to national trail standards that are used by the Park Service and the Forest Service. And everything was worked out with the state parks. And we went over there to start working on it. Oh, my stars. Now, I understand this is no longer true. But the person that we had to work with back then insisted that we should wear hard hats and steel-toed boots and all this kind of stuff. Well, we didn't have steel-toed boots, and nobody wanted to wear hard hats. And I think we did that one time, and then Neil Wickham just started calling people up and saying, okay, folks, we're going to have the gorilla work session. And meet me at where we're building. At, we started out at Wolf Den Loop was the first part that was built. And he'd say, meet me over there Saturday morning at 8, and we'll just go to work. And so that's how the major part of the trail was built originally, was we just show up on weekends and hope the state parks people weren't around to tell us we had to put on hard hats and stuff. Um, because, frankly, that ain't fun to have to be toting all that stuff. And um, that part got built, and then 
I think the second part that was built was actually down toward the Callaway store. Um, but they're about 23 miles in the trail, Pine Mountain Trail itself, and there are an equal number of accessory trails going off and in various directions. And Neil worked on that trail, oh gosh, for a good 20 years. I mean, for 20 years he was the man. And he would corral people to add trail or repair trail or things like that. And uh, as I say, it's my understanding now that there's a much better working relationship <laughs> with the parks people about that. But he stayed so involved with that. Neil died two years, yeah, this is, he died two years ago uh, in his late 80s. And that was just his baby. If any of you know his son, Malin, um, you tell him we still appreciate um, what Neil did in getting that started. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Getting out those old dams that were the old mill dams at, at uh, Columbus, getting some of those out and uh, where you can actually get down. He's a great guy, just couldn't have been a nicer person to work with, but like I said, he was having none of this rules, rules, rules stuff about building the trail, and I don't blame him. I don't think anybody would have showed up to do much work if it had stayed that way. Um, I was just gonna say, um, there are no mountain bikes allowed on the trail um, anywhere in the park, so um, on, at least on the Pine Mountain Trail, I don't know about others, and uh, the, essentially, the Georgia State Parks approach to managing the Pine Mountain Trail is to use the standards that are in the Wilderness Act, that there will be no wheeled uh, vehicles of any kind allowed on the trail. And frankly, it makes maintenance a lot easier you know, if you don't have mountain bikes. So I, I don't blame the state of Georgia at all for, for doing that. The east end of the trail, kind of the northeast end, is up at the WJSP Tower, if you know where that is, toward um, uh, Warm Springs. And then the south end, of course, is down at the Callaway Country Store. Just as a hint, by the way, if you don't want to have to pay the parking fee, because there's a parking fee at all the trailheads in the park, but if you park at the Country Store, you are not charged. So <laughs> if you take that end of the trail, uh, which is a nice view in the spring and fall, um, you can park at the store and go up and back. And as far as distances, you know, I'm trying to think, Wolf Den is probably like seven and a half miles around, um, I would think. Um, Dowdle's Knob is maybe four and a half miles. I'm very fond of that. I used to have as a Girl Scout camp counselor at Camp Conchardi. So if you're at Dowdle's Knob and you look down at the lake down below, that was where I taught swimming and canoeing. And we would hike up the mountain every Sunday for scout zones, uh, right there where the uh, statue is, although the statue wasn't there then. Um, I'm trying to think the end from the park headquarters to the store, it's not quite four miles, so that's a, a fairly short hike um, in there. Um, anyway, I hope you'll get over there and enjoy it. Uh, Neil would love for you to do it. He, he adored being in the out of doors. Um, as far as Bartram Trail goes, um, well, uh, let me backtrack a moment. The, um, to explain, because I was about to say it's a National Recreation Trail, in 1968, the uh, National Trail Systems Act was passed, and it designated you can have National Historic Trails, National Recreational Trails, things like this, and uh, the first trails were actually designated in 1971. I believe the Bartram Trail here was the first one in Alabama to be listed, um, but quite frankly, Unlike the information that's available uh, on the internet about Pine Mountain Trail and FDR State Park, the information for Tuskegee National Forest and the Bartram Trail is abysmal. And so don't expect to go on the website, any website, and find out very much about it. Um, it was, we started building it in the early 70s. Um, the part below US 80 
the low area down there, not the upland part. The upland section north of US 80 is open to mountain bikes. The lower section is not for obvious reasons. And quite frankly, the uh, folks that laid it out made a drastic mistake when they first did it. And I, it was right down along the stream in very low areas. It flooded all the time. We had a lot of problems with it. We had to put in boardwalks and bridges and, and all. And then the big flood, which would have been December of 2015, just tore that lower section up. Um, there's, it's the Student Conservation Association, I think is the name of that group, that uh, did the restoration work on it last year. And it got reopened in the fall of last year. It's a very lovely hike in the spring and the fall. Summer, not so much. Um, it's pretty, you can get pretty warm down in there um, and humid. But there are some um, lovely little side beaches and all. I almost brought, while we were building the trail, we sat down to eat lunch one day. We all brought our sack lunches on one of the uh, little beaches, pebble beaches out along Choctafala Creek. And I have a huge um, chert arrowhead. I sat down, I'm looking right at this beautiful arrowhead that was in perfect condition. <laughs> and so that's my souvenir from building the Bartram Trail. Um, it's not a long trail. Uh, the North Trailhead is, like you said, is up on 29, and the South Trailhead is, what is that, county road, whatever, down there. It's about maybe, what, eight and a half miles? It can't be nine um, down through there. Um, it doesn't have exactly, you know, scenic vistas, overlooks, and that type of thing because it's so low down in the forest. But um, it's beautiful woods, and especially when the dogwoods are blooming in the spring. Just so you'll understand, I'm assuming when you say Bartram Trail, people go, oh, probably named for William Bartram, but maybe that's not obvious. Um, and the Bart William Bartram and his father, John Bartram, famous early botanists in the United States. Um, in fact, uh, John Bartram, the father, was such a well-known naturalist, even in Europe, that Linnaeus, who you know, did the species plantarum, the designated the scientific names of all the plant species, um, referred to him as the world's greatest natural botanist, which coming from a European academic, I thought said an awful lot about what a good botanist John Bartram must have been. He traveled a lot both north of Philadelphia where he lived and through the south, and his son came with him on one trip to Florida and then came back in the mid-1700s. Um, he started before the revolution, but hey, he was a Quaker. He continued right on uh, on his journey during the revolution. I don't think he finished until 1877 or 78. So afterwards, then he wrote it up. And um, the book turned out to be extremely famous in Europe. It's very well known. and. Um, in fact, if you've ever read the famous poem in Zanadu did Kubla Khan, A Stately Pleasure Dome Decree, and all this, the author of it says he was, I believe, smoking, was it opium, and reading Bartram's description of the St. John's River the night before when he wrote it. But um, be that as it may, but that's why we had a whole group of people that founded what's called the Bartram Trail Association back in the mid-70s, trying to get sections of trail designated in honor of Bartram and his travels. And so there's not one continuous trail because in a lot of the Southeast, you know, a main US highway will be going right along where the Indian trail went. But there are pieces of it. This is one little piece. There's a much longer canoe trail going down the Alabama River and through the Tensaw Delta. There's a very long piece of, of the trail in North Carolina and South Carolina in parts of Georgia. Uh, there's portions in Louisiana, um, Canoe Trail uh, in Florida. Uh, so there are all these bits and pieces that have kind of been put together and um, in honor of Bartram. So that's the reason there, it's not one continuous thing, but it's kind of a, a little bit of a, uh, up here, a little bit there. But I hope that's some useful information on it. The, as I say, the trail is reopened if you want to get down there, and it's where the, um, uh, the herpetologists at the university, there's a beautiful rock that you'll pass along the lower portion of the trail, and that's the one they use to drape snakes on to take pictures <laughs> on.
the lobby for her to have her whole wisdom Wednesday, obviously. So, did you hear what I said? You need to have your own full wisdom Wednesday sometime. <laughs> okay, I got one more really interesting destination for you. Flag Mountain. I've been reading, anybody been to Flag Mountain? One person? This is, I'm telling you, this has got to be on your to-do list. Um, a little over 70 miles, you head up 280 past Alexander City. Once you get off of 280, you still got a 30 minute drive on some really back roads. But the, the significance of Flag Mountain is that it's the, if you think about the Appalachians coming down this direction, this is the, Flag Mountain is the last 1,000 foot elevation mountain in the Appalachian chain. Uh, the other cool thing is it's the southern terminus of the Pinhoti Trail, which we don't have time to talk a lot about, but that's uh, 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 the most significant uh, length trail in uh, Alabama. And <clears throat> as I did a little research on Flag Mountain, it's, it's two things. It's the mountain, but it's also this guy right here. This guy <clears throat> is unbelievable. It, people who hike the Appalachian Trail, they get a trail name. Um, and Nimble Will Nomad is uh, MJ, uh, uh, Meredith J. Eberhardt, was a, a Florida native, is a retired MD. He, within the last year or so, uh, he's 80 years old, he's been named the caretaker up here at Flag Mountain, which is Wheelgolfki State Park, and I probably didn't say that right. Um, but Nimble Will is the creek in Georgia, uh, near Springer Mountain, where he had a home. So that part of his name comes from that creek. And the nomad, uh, this, is, this fellow has probably hiked more miles of, of trail than anybody else in the United States. He's done all three of the major trails, Appalachian, Pacific Coast, Continental Divide. He's done every national scenic trail. It's just a fascinating man. And I was fortunate enough to uh, meet and talk with him a week ago this past Sunday when, when I was up there. Um, we're going to take a, a group up there b between the next two turns, uh, and I want you to, to meet this guy because he couldn't be a nicer gentleman. Uh, so he's, he's one of the major reasons you need to go up there. Um, they have restored CCC cabins up there that rent for $25 a night. Um, and, and here, again, they're sort of laying claim to be the beginning of the Appalachian Mountain chain. Uh, there's, there's about four cabins up there. There's a, there's a fire tower, which you can't go up now because, I don't know, I can't remember. It's not safe or something. But it's just a very interesting uh, destination. There's one of the old restored cabins. So um, uh, it, it's, it's about 71 miles, but it's, about, it's a good hour and a half trip. from. It's a good long day trip. Uh, and there's, the, let's see, what do I got? Oh, there's, there's my dog. He's with me. Uh, we, I was standing at a trail intersection trying to figure out which way I wanted to go next. And I heard this terrible noise and he had flushed a turkey, and a wild turkey. And if you've ever been close to a wild turkey when they take off, oh my gosh. And <clears throat> I, most of the time I try to, I, I had him on a, a, a leash like you're supposed to. And I run into uh, uh, Mr. Eberhardt up there and we're sitting there talking and he says, well that dog run away? And I said, no, there's no way he's running away. He said, well take him off that leash. So that's just the kind of guy he was. He was so nice, but uh, this is, you, you can't tell. It's, you gotta kind of pay attention to, to follow that trail, but that's kind of way the woods looks up there. Here's the Pinhoti Trail. There's the Southern Terminus down here at Flag Mountain. And uh, Betsy Sutton, who's not feeling well, couldn't be here today, was up at Cheehaw the same day I happened to be down here. And sh there's a hundred mile trail run of some kind on the Pinhoti Trail, and those runners were running past her up there that day. Um, but it turns out they didn't come uh, this far down. Now there's, unfortunately, and you see this with some trails, there's some section here that basically follow roads. But here's the cool thing, there's some, this is the Appalachian Trail, this is a, the connector, uh, this Benton Mackay Trail, that you, uh, but some people, a Springer Mountain probably wouldn't want you to do that, but some people want to connect what's the beginning of the Appalachian Trail now uh, and bring it all the way down here to Flag Mountain. Uh, Alabama would probably like that. I'm not sure Georgia would be too crazy about it. So, um, oh, this is, uh, I think that's Kim Waits. <laughs> she, uh, she's an interesting lady. Um, she uh, works for Wild South, is that it, Bill? 
Is that the name of that? She's employed by them, and she kind of is in control of the Chiha Duggar Wilderness, and she put out a call for some hikers to go with her to check out what trail maintenance needed to be done in the, in the uh, Chiha and Duggar Wilderness. And so Doug and I went up there one day, and we were kind of scouting the trail for a special interest group hike, but uh, uh, what we found wasn't too crazy. But again, this is that southern terminus of the Pinhoti Trail at Pine Mountain. So that's it. So I'm curious. Um, uh, but in turn, what's coming up is the winter term, the spring term, and I'm, I'm thinking about the spring term of instituting a rule that says if you've hiked with, so far there's been more demand than we had supply for spots. I, I like to keep it at about a dozen people. And uh, I may uh, ask that anybody who's hiked before sit out for the spring term to give some other people, new people, a chance to get in. But we will be announcing some hikes in between terms too. Now I'm curious, does anybody know of a good trail within 70 miles of Auburn that I haven't talked about. I'm, I'm, I'm not, this, this isn't, I'm serious here, because I, I, I sure would like to know about it. So if you, if you know about it or think about it, let, let me know, I'd appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I, I, okay. I'll tell you what I know about that. I forget the name of it, but I went out there to scout that. I went out there to scout that one day and I took my dog with me. If it's what I'm thinking of, it's a sewage treatment plant water for Opelika and it stunk. My dog stunk. It was terrible. It, but those burning blinds, what is it? Is that, what's the name of it? Siddiqui Wood Duck Preserve. Is that it? Siddiqui Wood Duck Preserve? I probably offended somebody when I said that. Well, I might have just caught it on a bad day. But it, <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. What? You know what? It's four o'clock, and they're going to start turning the lights off on me. But we'll take two more questions, and I'll stay here as long as anybody wants to talk. So let's go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I, I don't know, but yes, ma'am. We did talk about that one. Yeah. No, that that was. I think might have been number one on my list. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. Thank you. I, I think I, I think we need to let people go now. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it, and I'll stick around as long as I want to talk. <laughs>